My name is Talia Davidoff and I am born and bred from the Garden Roots. I was born in George, grew up in Oudsoorin. It's a rechte Afrikaanse plattelandse maisie. Um, and I'm currently based in Oregon City, Oregon, America. Grew up, my father owned one of the first scuba diving companies in Cape Town. It was called UDEC, Underwater Diving Equipment Company. And he also edit, uh, headed up the False Bay Underwater Club in the 70s. So I was always brought up around scuba diving and free diving, but never took it on officially until uh, after university. I went and studied marine biology at the University of Cape Town, after which I went and took my open water scuba diver um, with Paddy through Into the Blue in Cape Town. And I, I remember my first dives and I remember thinking, I'm home and this is what I've, I was always meant to do. Um, and I think my instructor, who's the owner, Theo Prince, saw that and he said to me, Tali, I think you'd make a great instructor. So I went on to do my rescue, my dive master, my instructor, and my staff instructor with Into the Blue. So I'm a paddy staff instructor for scuba. I'm also a paddy um, free diving instructor. I then furthered my education and I'm a Nawi free diving instructor trainer and intermediate instructor as well as a PFI intermediate instructor. Um, I believe in continuing education. Um, so when did I start diving? I started diving uh, as I said just after university and I, I really loved it and what was quite wonderful was I was given an, an incredible opportunity of a lifetime to go and work alongside um, now Dr. Sara Andriotti and uh, Michael Ratson to work as the in-house marine biologist um, with, uh, with Mike Ratson and learn, learn the ways of great white sharks. Um, it was truly an, an incredible experience and I can't, uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. My father. Um, while he was still alive, was the oldest and longest playing underwater hockey player in South Africa. Um, as you can tell, I think he's quite a legend. And so with that, I was, you know, doing, practicing breath hold twice a week and even went to nationals when I was 21. So when Paddy came out with the freediver course, I had the opportunity to become, myself and four others, to become the first Paddy trained freediving instructors in Africa. Uh, so I jumped on the occasion and went through the instructor course and by the end of it, uh, you know, really, really decided freediving is something that I want to do permanently forever and ever and ever and ever. So that's kind of how I got into it and then, you know, shortly after went into the competitive realm and currently am, am now trying to train instructors and, and still compete. Um, have I ever had a harrowing or funny dive experience? So I do have a, a dive experience which I suppose would be considered both harrowing and both quite funny at the same time. And it was as a scuba diver um, when myself and Sarah Andriotti and Mike Ratson were building the shark safe barrier. We were building the test site in Shark Alley. Um, it was, you know, moving a lot of concrete blocks around bringing down PVC pipes, doing a lot of rope ties, a lot of rigging, a lot of hard work. And there was a, there was a day <laughs> where I just swam a bunch of uh, PVC pipes down and they had these uh, ropes attached to them. And Mike swam up to me and he grabbed some of them. And as he grabbed them, he started swimming away. One of the lines wrapped around my snorkel and uh, took my mask. Um, and as that happened, I don't even know how my weight belt came off at the same time. So luckily there's a concrete block right in front of me. So I just grab onto the, the hook on the block and I'm in shark alley without a mask on and without a weight belt on. And anyone who's done work with sharks, you know the worst place you could be is floating up to the surface. So I was just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna hold on to this concrete block until someone figures out what's happening and eventually Sara sees me and and swims over and I we kind of signal and I'm like just you know Mike has it and she brings me back my mask and she helps me with my weight belt and 
I remember being so like outwardly calm, but inwardly so panicked at what had happened. But you know, we got to keep working. So then that's what we did. And I remember getting back up to the top and Mike was sitting on the boat and he was just like, I mean, while the rest of us were working, you could see you two girls were just having a good time underwater. And I was just like the cheek of it, Mike. I am very, very um, into advocacy for sharks. My friend Kimberly Jeffries, she works with scientific um, divers and photographs the great whites in Oahu. Um, and I work closely with her. Um, I'm currently, no projects uh, that I'm currently working on. I am a coral reef um, CPR ambassador. So I am constantly talking to people and getting the word out on uh, managing coral reefs and coral reef conservation and when I was in the Maldives I did do work with uh, Dr. Andrew Bruckner um, on trying to figure out which coral uh, which coral species are more heat resistant or heat tolerant um, because we were having a lot of bleaching events and water was over 30 degrees for up to two months at a time just destroying the reefs so our job was to try and figure out which coral was more heat tolerant and try and repopulate the reef successfully um, using uh, different techniques. And you know, anything ocean is, you know, right now we're doing the one ocean, obviously doing a lot of plastic cleanup out here. I have a river float next Sunday to clean up river. Right now, I think our biggest issue is single use plastic and trash. And um, I think that's a really, really important thing uh, that everyone can, can focus on. When I completed my, my freediving course, we kind of realized that I had a natural ability to, to freedive um, pretty deep. So I took it upon myself. I made a promise to myself after I completed my freediving instruction that in a year's time, I would go to my first nationals and I would win it, um, which I did. Uh, I now hold six freediving national records and three world records for spearfishing. For those who have been following me, you know that I am a quarter finalist for Miss Health and Fitness 2020. Um, I have been working really hard, unfortunately due to COVID, I don't have access to pool or open water training. So I've really had to up my game on dry training. So I've taken up kickboxing and I run and I do, I do workouts every single day. So I train twice a day, six days a week. Um, working really hard and you know hopefully at the end of this long journey I can win and, and get $20,000 of which I will be donating a small percentage of that to the Red Crisis Cape Town Trust. Um, I believe that femicide and rape is a huge issue in South Africa so I decided that I really wanted to even though it wasn't required of me I would really like to donate some money to that. Um, but Almost every day I am getting up at 5 a.m. I'm doing my training. I then, you know, get into a couple of things with work and in the evening I train again. I intermittent fast, 20 hours fast, four hours eating period, which is not as hard as people think it is. Um, and as, as with regards to a specific diet, I don't follow a specific diet. I do follow one rule is if you're gonna eat it, you have to make it. My advice to you guys is if you want to improve your breath hold and you want to improve your depth, one of the biggest things that I would say is simply have the right coach, have the right safety. Um, I have learned that I will not push my limits unless I trust the person that I'm with. And you know, you at the end of the day, you're putting your life in someone else's hands. So if I'm gonna push my limits, I wanna know, I wanna feel safe enough to do it. So that's my biggest mental block is uh, well that, and, that, and that in itself is something to say is my biggest block is mental. So in order for me to get through my mental is I need to be, I need to feel safe. And I don't feel safe unless I'm diving with people that I trust. Get certified and get insurance. 
Um, I am a DAN member and I think it's really, really important, um, especially for someone who's competing. We, a lot of people don't think that DCS happens to, to free divers. It does, so we can get bent. And most of the time it is neuro, so it is very dangerous. So if I don't have that, then if something happens, what am I gonna do? Hyperbaric chambers are, are not going to accept me. So that's really, really important. And especially for a traveling diver, it is very, very important to have Dan insurance because I need to be covered wherever I'm going. I can't just be covered in South Africa. Dan worldwide and being part of Dan South Africa is really, really important to me.